This module will present various aspects of hot water heating. Hot water is a necessity throughout the year and for a variety of activities. Many people are often surprised to learn how much hot water they actually use in a given day. This table provides estimates made by the Department of Energy of the average amounts of water used for different activities. 32 gallons for a clothes washing, 20 gallons for a shower, 25 gallons for a bath, 8 to 12 gallons for automatic dishwashing, 4 to 15 gallons for hand washing, and 5 gallons for preparing food. On average, each American uses 15 to 30 gallons of hot water every day. And since heating water takes up a considerable amount of our utility bills, it's a very good place to look for energy savings. Fasten your seat belts because part two of this module will cover many topics, including water heaters and components, types of hot water heaters and how they work, energy factor of water heaters, water conservation, and water heater and pipe insulation. There are several types of water heaters that are available on the market. Most have tanks and range in size from 20 to 80 gallons and can be fueled by electricity, natural gas, propane, or oil. Most water heaters have a storage tank. However, on-demand water heaters that do not have a tank are gaining in popularity. Just like other appliances, there are two major costs associated with water heaters, their initial purchase and their operating costs. Therefore, it's important that homeowners take a look at the entire life cycle of costs when considering a purchase or an upgrade of a hot water heater and incorporate both initial price and operating costs. It's also important to note that many hot water heaters that are newer can typically provide a good return on investment when replacing an older model. Over half the hot water heaters in the United States are electric. Since they're not that efficient, they represent a large amount of our nation's overall electricity demand. They tend to be like heating hot water with a light bulb. Gas hot water heaters are much more efficient and uh, are also therefore much more popular as a replacement for an electric hot water heater. Instantaneous hot water heaters can also save energy because they don't require hot water to be stored over long periods of time, um, but they also have a number of disadvantages that we'll talk about. Gas and electric tank heaters have some common features, but it's easy to tell them apart with a closer look. Both have a hot and cold water heating supply at the top. Cold water is introduced at the top of a tank through a dip tube, which enables hot water to be drawn from the top of the tank at the same time to avoid mixing. A telltale sign of an electric hot water heater is the electric supply and also most models have two coils with an individual temperature control on the side of the water heater. A telltale sign of a gas hot water heater is typically the flue for the exhaust at the top of the unit. Gas lines may look like water pipes, but they enter at the base of the unit and can also be a telltale sign of whether or not you're looking at a gas hot water heater versus an electric hot water heater. Whether a water heater is fueled by electricity or, or gas, the concept of how cold water comes in and is heated remains the same. When hot water is used for cooking, cleaning, or washing, water is drawn from the storage tank. To replace that water, cold water is brought in and heated, keeping the tank always full. This animation illustrates how a gas hot water heater uh, will work by bringing in the cold water introduced at the base of the tank, uh, the f burner coming alive to heat that water up, and exhausting the exhaust to the flue, the hot water raising to the top and being drawn out for use uh, as uh, for a shower or for cooking. When electric hot water heater has dual coils, they typically work in a sequence to improve their efficiency. In step A, hot water flows from the top outlet and cold water enters the tank at the bottom through the dip tube. This temperature drop switches the thermostat at the bottom of the hot water heater on. If the water at the top of the tank is fully displaced by cooler water, as shown in step B, the top thermostat will come on and the lower one will turn off. When the flow stops, the top element will stay on until it reaches its set point and heating up the water at the top of the tank. At this point, the upper coil will shut off and the lower coil will come back on 
until its set point is reached and the tank has been fully reheated, or fully recovered, as shown in step D. It's common to have the top and bottom of these thermostats set to the same temperature. Electric hot water heaters often need repair and, if not tended to, can erode in efficiency. Some examples of things that need to be fixed are dip tubes that can corrode or break, anode tubes that can collect water and build up, heating coils that can develop corrosion, and debris that can build up at the bottom of a tank. If any of these conditions go unnoticed for years, which is not uncommon, they can seriously affect the efficiency of a unit. An old electric hot water heater that has not been serviced is an obvious opportunity for an improvement that will likely have a high return on investment. This is an example of an on-demand hot water heater. It is often placed close to the point of use and as water is drawn into uh, a faucet or a shower it passes through a heating element and is instantaneously heated. Uh, the main benefit of this is that uh, the water heater isn't keeping a whole tank full of hot water all the time which can lose power over a period of time. On-demand hot water heaters have no storage tank so they have no standby losses and can reduce energy consumption 20 to 30 percent. They're also fairly small and they can be popular as upgrades and renovation projects. Some studies however have shown that the continuous supply of hot water can actually result in a tendency of occupants to take longer showers and this is because the hot water never runs out. As a result, some energy efficiency advocacy groups have stopped recommending on-demand hot water. In solar hot water heating, sunlight strikes a absorber surface within a solar collector. The collector heats water or a transfer fluid which is then pumped through the collector the heated fluid runs through a coil in a water heater or a separate preheating tank of a conventional water heater uh, and is stored there until needed. If additional heat is needed on cloudy days or when it's very hold, cold, the solar hot water heater is supplemented by a conventional hot water heating system that uses electricity or natural gas. Since typical water heaters need to heat water from wells or the city service from 50 degrees to 110 degrees or hotter, Solar hot water heaters can dramatically reduce or eliminate the load on the water heater as the preheated water now enters the water heater at a much warmer temperature. Solar collectors are typically flat panels or sets of glass tubes that heat up in the sun and transfer heat to the water pumped through the collector. Solar thermal collectors typically have a pretty good return on investment. The biggest downside is that it can be often hard to find a contractor to install the collector and they're also considered to be uh, unattractive uh, when viewed from the street. Heat pump water heaters are relatively new on the market but they have some big advantages. They use an evaporative cycle uh, just like a heat pump uh, but instead they heat water instead of air. They absorb heat and as a result they can cool the space that they're located in uh, if they're not in such a space uh, to absorb sufficient heat, uh, most of them also have electric resistance coils that can be activated as a backup. A recent study found that a heat pump water heater coupled with photovoltaic energy is actually more cost effective than solar thermal water heaters. Some heat pump water heaters have a condensing unit that can be located outside or away from the unit. Others have the heat pump integrated into the tank and can take up about as much space as a regular tank water heater. Hybrid systems of hot water heating are also possible. This system depicts a heat pump water heater and a solar thermal collector that are combined into a hybrid system. This type of system can be very efficient, but it might be hard to find a contractor that's capable and familiar with these type of systems and willing to install it at a cost that's affordable to a homeowner. Hot water efi efficiency is reported in terms of energy factor, or EF. Energy factor is the ratio of the energy supplied in the heated water divided by the energy input into the water heater. 
Electric hot water heaters have relatively high energy factors, but similarly to electric heaters and light bulbs, they use a lot of electricity. Older gas water heaters have energy factors between 0.59 and 0.65, while newer condensing water heaters have efficiency factors approaching 0.95. Oil hot water heaters are rare and are typically integrated with a furnace and have a similar energy factor as older gas counterparts. Since heat pump water heaters use a refrigeration cycle and do not create heat using a fuel source, they have energy factors that are larger than one. Energy factor is also normalized over different types of cycles in which water heaters operate through testing. Some types of losses that can occur include uh, recovery losses, which refer to the time and energy hot water heaters need to take up to heat up after hot water has been drawn out of them. Standby losses, which occur when hot water heaters are standing idle and can be high in tank hot water heaters that lack good insulation. Standby losses are all but eliminated in tankless hot water heaters. Cycling losses refer to the heat wasted due to long distances between the hot water heater and points of use. There are a number of ways to save energy in hot water heaters, uh, or save energy in, in hot water in general, uh, and they include conserving water, uh, insulating your existing hot water heater, uh, insulating hot water hot, uh, pipes, and uh, using lower hot water heater temperatures. Let's talk about each of these in a little bit more detail. A family of four each showering five minutes a day can use about 700 gallons of hot water a week. That's actually a three-year drinking supply of water for one person. So um, their water conserving, water conserving shower heads or aerating faucets can actually cut that in half uh, and a family of four could actually save 14,000 gallons of water heater a year and the energy required to heat it by taking some energy conservation and water conservation measures. So conserving water is a big opportunity for saving energy uh, and uh, it's also a, a pretty substantial opportunity uh, to save on overall energy costs because you're saving money on the energy to heat the water and you're also saving money on the water and hopefully conserving water in the process. However, preaching to people about taking short showers is generally a pretty tough sell and not a great way to make friends. You may, however, find it useful to remind people about the connection between showers and hot water and energy costs and recommend that they try not to take really long showers. I once had a cousin that used to nap in the shower when he was a teenager. Now he's in the Marines. Anyway, in a household with many occupants, it's definitely worth looking into a low flow shower head and other mechanisms to reduce the overall hot water used in showers. Adding insulation to a water heater is uh, a good idea if it's an older model built before 2004 because before then water heaters weren't built with much insulation. So installing an insulating jacket is an effective do-it-yourself energy saving project especially if your water heater is in an unheated space like a garage or a basement. The insulated jacket will reduce standby loss which is the heat loss through the walls of the tank by 25 to 40 percent and saving uh, overall 4 to 10 percent on your water heating bills. Water heater jacket insulations uh, typically only cost around ten dollars. Insulating hot water pipes is also a good idea. Uh, your hot water pipes, uh, if insulated, will reduce uh, losses in hot water flowing from the tank to your faucet and more importantly it will, will reduce standby losses when the tap is turned off and then back uh, on within an hour or so. A great deal of energy and water is wasted waiting for hot water to reach a tap. Even when pipes are insulated, the water in the pipes will eventually cool, uh, but it stays much warmer for longer if the pipes are insulated. Also, uninsulated pipes can accelerate heat loss in a tank by helping to draw the heat out of the tank. So even cold water supply pipes should be insulated within six feet of a hot water heater. Water heater temperature is also an important way to make sure uh, we're watching how much energy is spent on hot water heating. Water heater thermostat should be set to the lowest possible temperature that still provides sufficient hot water. 
Some manufacturers recommend between 140 to 150 degree temperature settings, but that actually would be a scalding temperature and water at that temperature would need to be mixed with cold water anyway. So instead of mixing it with cold, just heat it to the temperature you need it. So in many households, a temperature setting of 115 to 120 degrees is fine. Uh, this often translates to about midway between the low and the medium setting on the hot water heater. It's worthwhile noting that for every 10% or 10 degree reduction in water temperature will save about 3 to 5 percent on your overall water heating costs. When you're away on vacation, you might think about turning the thermostat down to the lowest setting or even turning the hot water heater off altogether. Uh, with a gas hot water heater, you'd want to make sure you know how to relight the pilot light if you turn it off while you're away.